Welcome, Hacksters. Uh, I have the pleasure today of introducing Andrew Soa, who is a PCB art expert. You might have seen his Benchoff Nickel, featuring Brian Benchoff of Hackaday. And uh, the PCB uh, Beagle Bone, what would you call it? Beagle PCB? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a business card for uh, a couple of people who are in the Beagle Board Foundation. So good. This one is from Christine Long. You also have ones from, uh, I think, uh, Drew Festini and Co. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So uh, tell us a bit about how you got started doing this. Um, I kind of, basically I was working at my desk uh, doing a layout for another project and um, you know, probably like four hours into regular PCB layout and I was just kind of blowing off steam before I went to bed and uh, saw like the bench off nickel and the bench off buck and, uh, or saw the bench off buck and um, you know, like the, the picture inside. So I'm like, maybe I could turn that into a PCB and, kind of just happened at you know two in the morning one night so and then once I started doing that um, I gave it to Brian and it kind of all spiraled from there and it had been uh, advancing the process for the past you know two years or so year and a half. Awesome uh, cool uh, so we're so excited that you could do a workshop on this. Uh, Drew Festini from Oshpark was super like being like you should do this you should do this and I'm, uh, I took the workshop at Teardown a couple of weeks ago and it was fantastic so Super stoked. Thank you. Uh, I guess let's just get started. Oh, yeah. So um, the first kind of step of the process is to um, lay everything out on the computer. So I usually use Illustrator, but you can use Inkscape. And, and you know, my main, my main thing I've been doing lately is taking pictures and creating them to PCB. So mm. uh, to do that, you have to take the picture and you have to get into um, colors that are could work on on the pcb so usually it's uh, about um five or six different colors that you could you could work with um so i'll just kind of show you my screen here okay. hold up i lost the window oh no oh, here we go all right sweet so um let's see Whoa, Adobe's yeah. using much cooler art now. <laughs> yeah, it changes uh, every every couple months or so. Mm. Got to deal with the bug where it never loads properly with the top uh, taskbar. Mm. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do something for Simone. Uh, yeah. uh, tribute since uh, she is getting better. Um, so I have a, a picture of Simone when she was doing some rocket launching. <laughs> so the goal today is to take this picture and make into PCB art. Um, and more specifically, it's going to be um, for her uh, EDC one ba bag uh, for, that Adam Savage made. Cool. Um, so there's a specific uh, dimensions that I want to make it. So uh, you can put some Velcro on there and she can put it on her bag if she would like to. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so your first step is to go to your artboard down here. Uh, and then there's some settings up here. Uh, basically, you want to set your, it's, it's easier if you set your dimensions um, before uh, you start. You could change dimensions afterwards while you're importing to KiCad um, or your PCB software program, but uh, it's easier to start off with the dimensions you want it to be. Um, it just simplifies the process. Uh, so this I want to do um, three and a half inches wide. And two inches high. Um, so now I have um, my artboard scaled down. So I want to take my picture, uh, shift to keep pre preserve the scaling. Ooh. And then I also want to have uh, some text in this. So I'm going to keep the left side open um, so that, you know, I want to put the picture about right there. Um, so with this whole process, uh, you want to have the computer do as much work for you as you can. Yeah. Um, so Illustrator and Inkscape have different uh, image trace functions. So they'll take an image and try to make it into a vector file. Um, so up here in the image trace, you could have uh, different settings, three colors, six colors, uh, 16. Um, so if you get lucky, um, yeah. the six color will just work. Um, so basically it renders the photo down into 
uh, six different colors, and then you can take those colors and then mock them up into um, the different PCB colors. So if mm -hmm. I were to go um, expand that out, um, I select everything. Um, and then there's a little art wheel here. Uh, this is the main reason why I use uh, Illustrator because it makes it easy to uh, oh. switch colors. What does the art wheel do? Uh, oh. So it recolors. So basically this is all the colors. Um, cool. Well, this is all the colors currently in my, f in my file here. Um, so now I could go in here and I could change all, all these colors and it'll uh, remap everything in my current picture here. Awesome. Um, so I usually start on either the darker light side. So uh, dark is going to be a uh, very dark purple if you do a notch park board, which I mm. uh, usually do this in since I'm friends with uh, Drew and the, all the people over there. Um, oh, shoot. Um, so basically, um, it allowed me to change all that color to that purple. Mm. This is gonna be a little lighter purple. Um, and um, I kind of just found, these aren't you know super accurate colors, but um, I found these just messing around uh, through different trial and error. Mm -hmm. so, um, So right here, uh, you know, my, my darkest colors are going to be where the solder mask is because it's purple solder mask is dark color. Um, right. So right here, this dark purple, uh, this is going to be solder mask on bare uh, FR4. So it's the bare um, fiberglass. Um, so because there's no copper under it, and solder mask is not 100% opaque material, and it'll actually be darker where there's no copper. So the copper will lighten it up. Um, so you can get two different colors of solder mass um, because you're changing what's underneath it. That's um, so cool. So, the, so that's the, the least contrast color. So you have to be a little careful um, on how you apply it. But um, so it won't be this strong in the finished product of a color difference. Um, but these two colors will represent solder mask without copper underneath it. And uh, the lighter purple will be solder mask with copper underneath it. Mm. Um, and one cool thing with this is uh, there is a physical uh, depth increase when you do this. So if you put it underneath the light, you could see the ridges where the copper is. Uh, so it creates a little three-dimensionality too. So it helps kind of differentiate it when you're in viewing it in, in person. Totally. I'm staring at this one that I have here. To like, oh, yeah, it totally does that. <laughs> um, so um, this makes, you know, this, uh, what you have left now, so you have bare, there, um, hold on, make it a little easier on myself and show you um, my color palette. Um, and you have a blog post that talks yeah, about this so a bit, right? I have a blog post, uh, Creating a Bunch Off Nickel. Um, it's on andrewso.com is my website. Mm. Um, so this is kind of, um, you know, kind of another one I did. Um, so Let's see. So you have, these are your different colors here. So this is your um, solder mask and bare cop, or, or solder mask on FR4, solder mask with copper underneath, bare FR4, copper, and silk screen. So those are your, your five different colors. So um, what I have left, what I have left now is I have um, copper, bare FR4, and silk screen. So this is the super light, super light so. I would change that to uh, white. Um, these two look very similar. I actually changed that to red, but these are, are very close. So basically I have to combine two colors because they gave me six, I could only have five. Right. Um, so, or no, take it back, wrong one. I like that you have these memorized at this point. Uh, I have, yeah, I, I forget which ones I use, um, uh -huh. but I, I kind of generally remember. Mm. Depends on how long, if it t takes me a while, it, if I take a couple months before I do and I kind of forget which which numbers I usually use, but right. uh, it, I, so it's just about getting close enough. Mm -hmm. um, so now um, I have a picture that's rendered down. Um, this could then be exported and be made as PCB art. Um, mm. The issue with this is it could look better than this because um, 
we lost a fair amount of detail because we only did uh, six colors. Um, so if you kind of combine what the computer does with uh, your own decision-making process, you could get a little better results. So if okay. I step back, uh, go back to the real, original image. Um, so if I image trace and use 16 colors, mm -hmm. um, so I get way more colors. So this looks uh, much better, but it's kind of a false, uh, a false uh, improvement at this point. <laughs> You're gonna have to eliminate uh, eliminate colors from here. But you see, eliminate the sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll have you now. You pick up the different uh, circuit board traces in the original image um, in a little bit more detail. Um, so expand that out so you have the different sections control a to select all of it um, and if you go to recolor now so you have way more colors here but um, you then could yourself decide which colors to combine um, so basically all these would probably be a very similar color um, you know down here these you know you could use the darks um, as the different um, the dark solder mask um, mm. And then the other option you have is then you could go in and individually um, color in different stuff. So, oh, yeah. um, so I could pick this one right here and I can manually change that. Um, cool. So this, this whole process relies on a lot of contrast. So you have to try to find ways to make contrast with limited colors. Yeah. Um, so that's where like, you know, the art process of this comes from. It's not kind of black and white. Um, you kind of have to, um, decide where you could, what colors you could use to to create that that contrast to see where the shapes come out. Um, so in this, um, so doing that too, you could also, you don't have to follow this um, specific color chart. So you could change colors in here to use it to improve contrast. Mm. Um, so the easiest way for me to show you that is to open up one I did already, because Doing the 16 colors and rendering down does take some time, um, especially if you're going there and, and selecting individual um, pads yeah. or fills. Um, <laughs> so here's one I, I completed earlier uh, today. Um, so so uh, I did the same process where I had the 16 different colors and then manually combined them together. So here was like all blue sky, so I decided you know, I purposely made this section here white so I could get the face to, oh, um, yeah. to come come out. And then um, because I didn't want the sky all one color, I threw in some purple here um, mm -hmm. and kind of, um, you know, to bring out that, that difference. Um, so I kind of faked what the picture actually was for the purpose of trying to make it stand out for uh, the process here, so. It looks super cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you go in here, you can see how uh, you still get some of the circuit tracing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, this is what I usually do. And then um, if I want to get even more detail, I could actually uh, pick out sub sections of this and like overlay um, different layers. So if I wanted more detail in the face, I could just take, cut out the face and reduce the face down and then it'll give me more detail in the face. Oh. Yeah. And I could layer it over this. Hmm. Um, so this is, uh, let's see. I have a Lady Ada one, but um, I forgot where I put it. I won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what, I, for the Lady Ada one, uh, you may see online, that's what I did is, um, you know, I, I did the face a different one um, to mm. get more detail in the face there. Um, then, I remember uh, seeing that one, it's really cool. Yeah, I don't want to bring up my reasons because I have pictures of people that I don't necessarily don't have permission to show right now. So, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I should have prepped that. Um, so then for the other side here, since this a name badge, the purpose of this is to be a name badge for uh, a bag. I added a uh, Simone Space Agency, um, and actually used her font from her website. Oh, is that what that is? So yeah, you could actually look up, um, if you take a picture of font, there's a website that'll do reverse font lookup, uh -huh. which worked well. And then um, it's, uh, so 
it's a Squarespace site. I think it's Squarespace site, so I could I have Squarespace site, so I could um, type this out. All, but I actually just because um, I wanted to keep the uh, preserve the quality, I installed the font. It's a permanent marker font. <laughs> cool. Um, installed it in Illustrator. Um, that's a pretty easy process. You just download a file and double click it, and and look at Windows at least, and I'll install it into Windows. Um, so this is just um, the text tool. To write whatever you want, and then over here, uh, you can change angles, uh, you can change colors, um, sizes, all that. Uh, go down to the font, and then what I'm using right now is permanent marker. Uh, did that not update? Where is it? Right here. So yeah. <laughs> Um, change the color. I don't, I'm not an illustrator expert, so I don't know why I'm not getting options there, but uh, what I just did is just use the um, the ink tool mm. or the eye drop selector tool um, and that, that worked. Oh, nice. Um, I've never seen Norm yeah. Ipsum look so cool. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so what I did I separated separated these out into three different um, three different things so I could have a little more uh, freedom to move them, um, and then just copy pasted what I had uh, to create that shadow effect. Mm. Uh, manually offset a little bit. Uh, so that is um, so this is a finished mockup of what it's going to look at. Like look like for PCB art. So um, using this mockup, mock -up, I now need to make three different image files uh, to then put it into my uh, PCB software. And the three image files are going to be for the solder, the copper, the solder mask, and the silk screen? Uh, yeah, copper, solder mask, silk screen. Um, yeah, it, using those three, uh, different layers, you create the five different uh, colors. So cool. it's kind of a weird, you have, it's a weird thing to think about, but yeah, with three layers, you can get five different colors because uh, how they interact with each other. Mm. Um, and there's actually a fairly good video um, that I just put up that I could. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, uh, we can link that in the description to this video. Uh, oh, no. So there's a good video of uh, someone who went to visit a uh, PCB manufacturing facility in uh -huh. Shenzhen. Um, so you can kind of see those actual layers printed out and how they wow. move the board. Cool. Um, so I'll send you a link for that. But uh, that helps you kind of understand what's actually happening. Because um, a lot of this is um, they print out black, uh, black on a transparent film and shine light through it to, to create the different layers. So right. it's a physical it? like printing process and so yeah. screen process. Um, so it very much takes from... Um, you know, silk screen printing T-shirts is the same thing as silk screen on a PCB. Um, mm -hmm. So it has, you know, that's kind of where some of those ideas came from. Is um, having been around like silk screen. Well, what some of my old roommates used to do silk screen um, printing in the basement. So like I was familiar with that process. So so I cool. Of, uh, try to take that and put it into the world I I live in here. One interesting thing that Bunny mentioned at Teardown was that you can get much higher resolution on solder mask than silk screen sometimes, I think, because... Yeah, uh, the solder mask, uh, the silk screen and the solder mask are two different uh, processes. Mm -hmm. um, so solder mask is they print black onto a transparency and do uh, a UV cure. Uh -huh. And basically the black blocks the, uh, the light for the UV. Mm. And and then you wash it away. So where you don't want solder mask is you put black. Mm -hmm. um, and then where the silk screen is actually a, um, a you know, there's actually two different ways to do silk screen, uh, and they'll have different resolutions. One is traditional silk screen, like a you would silk screen a t-shirt. Little screen. And... Little screen with a squeegee. Yeah. Uh, pull it across, and then um, the other one is a printer. So it's a UV printer. So it'll oh. um, kind of like an inkjet printer, but it will print out um, the silk screen and then UV cured on top of that. Mm. Um, so yeah, those have different resolutions, but um, solder mask has very high precisions. I think it's like a thousand DPI or more than that. 
Dang. Um, so cool. yeah, it's, I mean, it needs to be good for tiny parts. So yeah, yeah. Um, like that misery board. <laughs> uh, all right. So next step is we want to prepare those image files. Um, so how I'm going to do that is uh, control A to get all of this. Um, and basically, I want to recolor um, these into black and white. Mm. Um, so if you get this little air, I don't know why it does this, but uh, sometimes the white or black doesn't come up as a selectable color. Mm. Um, so you could, if you hit this little bar, it'll come up. You may have to um, exit and re-enter. But um, mm. so the, for the first one, I want to do uh, copper. So where I want copper, I want to make black. Where I don't want copper, I want to make white. Um, so I want copper on, on the exposed copper. I want copper for this lighter purple. Um, it's nice to have copper underneath the silk screen to get a nice white. Um, and these two, I do not want copper. Oh, this was so much easier than doing it in Inkscape. Yeah, it's, it's much easier. Um, so then I could go and export to screen. Um, so I want to export to my desktop. Uh, I usually use 400 um, DPI. Uh, that um, is good enough, but not too crazy to like bog down uh, different web upload services. Mm. You do crazy high uh, DOS print, uh, you know, pro web processing sites could, could bog down and not, not like that. So mm. uh, 400 has worked out well for me, but you could, uh, in theory, kind of use whatever you want here. Um, so you export that, and then this will um, be a um, just a PNG file, um, and this will be where all the copper is. Cool. Um, so what I just do then is usually just undo, uh, and then do it again for the different layer. So um, solder mask, I want solder mask here uh, to show the show the bare FR4. I want solder mask to show the bare copper. Um, this is where I don't want solder mask. So it's kind of, solder mask is uh, where you don't want it, you want black. So mm -hmm. it's because that whole, um, this is basically what it's gonna look like when they print out um, that transparency to cure it. So you, you wanna black out where you don't want it. So you have to kind of think inverted sometimes. Mm. Um, so the same thing, control alt E. Um, and I want to export this. Uh, I forgot to do something. Um, because I don't know how to... Um, oh, renaming I it. I don't know how to change the name. So um, I want to... This was copper. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how, uh, how you change the names for export for Illustrator. But I usually sure. just do it one by one and... Uh, change them as they go. So this would be my mask. Uh, control Z to go back to where I was originally. Uh, then the last one is the silk screen. So uh, the silk screen is only uh, this, this white layer. And then Control Alt E to export. Um, and silk screen. So here are my three different um, image files I'm going to need um, to import. Um, so next we will go into KiCad. Um, you you know you could do this in different PCD software. I use KiCad. Um, Probably isn't the easiest one to do it in, but um, it's the one I use, and I off like I like to integrate the art stuff with um, other uh, functioning circuits, so it's nice to have it in the the yeah. native app, um, app I use. But um, the next thing I do is I use this bitmap uh, converter. Um, I'm using KiCad four. If you use KiCad five, uh, it's a little different um, icons, but um, it'll be this bitmap to component converter. Um, so what th this does, it takes a bitmap and converts it to a KiCad footprint file. Um, so KiCad can read it. So you need to, you want to make sure you have this PCB new selected. Um, I do uh, negative 
um, because it makes it easier uh, because um, negative means you're taking whatever the, the black parts or the active parts. So it's easier to see in the picture. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, my threshold value is usually in like the sixties. Um, it's, it, it's kind of worked out the best for me. Like I'll go over that in a second. Um, so I want to load in, um, let's load in the silk screen. Um, so this is showing you what, uh, what it's going to look like. Um, if you see, as I adjust the threshold, it'll change the edges a little bit. Right. Um, so using black and white limits that, um, because it's, but because it's interpreting, um, image file, it's not the smoothest transition. So you, there's some loss with conversion. Um, so yeah, 60 is kind of where, um, where I find the most best compromise for uh, what the original image looks like. Um, another thing you got to make sure is you set your uh, DPI correctly. So you could change the scale here. Um, so if I do 200 here, I actually will make this larger. And you can see the actual size here. Um, hmm. So you just need to make sure if you, since we set our, our dimensions in the beginning, um, we don't have to mess with odd dimensions here on the DPI um, because we already sent the set up the uh, size we wanted. Um, so I did, we just have to match our export DPI to our import DPI so it preserves that scaling. But if you didn't have, if you already had a file, um, you could actually mess with this DPI to scale the image um, in KiCad. So unfortunately, you know, KiCad can't do active scaling, so you have to know your size before you enter. Um, so if you ha if you want to do a couple different scales of the same image, you have to actually make um, new files for each. Right. Um, and for this one, I'm going to do uh, front side silk screen and just hit export. Uh, export to my desktop. This is a uh, silk screen. So I have this um, silk.kicad uh, dash mod here. Um, so that's my, my KiCad file for the silk screen. I want to repeat that uh, for the different, the other different files. Uh, this one is front side solder mask. Uh, so I want to change this dial here, Ooh. export that. That's going to be mask uh, and load in my copper file. Um, so there's no copper here uh, selection, uh, but that's fine. We'll fix that uh, in a second. Um, so I usually just keep it as solder mask. I'll export that uh, as copper. Um, and then you're done here. Um, so now you have your three different files. And if you load one of these files. Cool. Um, you will just have each, you'll just have one of the layers. So um, what we need to do now is combine the three different files. So it's one, one, um, one file. Um, so if we look at this uh, as a text file, um, you'll see this is um, the way KiCad processes this stuff is all human readable. So um, the section up here, is just kind of header information so that this doesn't contain anything uh, about geometry in the file. Hmm. Uh, but once you start to get this FP poly, um, these are actually all the coordinates uh, for the different geometries. Dang. So, so this is the information you have to tell you the shape. Um, so it looks like a lot of crazy stuff, but um, it actually is, is broken down pretty easily. Um, for what you care about is, here's a, a little more manageable one, uh, mm -hmm. but all these are different um, kind of fill zones or islands of uh, geometry. Um, oh so you have FP poly, you have a bunch of different points to show the outline. You have the layer and uh, a width. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of this layer, if, if I change this layer, I will change it in, in the software. So I could edit the text file and change, uh, change what layer I want. So in the copper here, um, because there was no uh, copper option, I have um, I'm on the mask layer. But because I have a text editor, 
I could uh, take that mask and change it to front side copper. So if we replace all, now all those change to copper. Um, nice. so, so instead of being uh, the mask layer, there'll be copper in the program. So to confirm that, um, so here I loaded the copper layer um, and this is all um, just, just on the mask layer right now. So if I reload that, um, so this changed color here and then I'm now on the copper layer. So actually it's a little hard to see cause there's no mask, but you may not be able to see it if with the quality of the, the stream here, but that is now all copper. I can confirm by this color changed here. So if I uh, un uncheck copper layer, it'll all disappear. Um, so basically by changing that text plot, that text name, you could change that shape to any one of these layers here. So if I want it to be backside uh, copper, I would just do uh, B.CU. I think the capital is important, so you need to make sure the capitaliz capitalization is correct. Um, but yeah, you have access to all these different layers, even though the, the GUI in the other program doesn't specify that. So. Um, if you want it to be on the back, do you have to flip it? It seems like a weird question, but I... Uh, yeah, so um, it depends. Yeah, so if you go in the program, you could flip to the back side and it'll, it'll rotate it. Um, so on the coins, um, for the coin I made for you, I just did it one time and then flipped it um, in, the, in the program and it uh, flipped it uh, um, so it wasn't mirrored. So mm. it's a little... Can, a little confusing to think about it, but yeah, the program will automatically flip it um, and cool. uh, when you put it to the other side. But you know, I've used this to do um, make holes in different footprint outlines and other uh, more um, useful stuff in an engineering sense. So you right. could, you could, uh, you actually have access to the edge cut layer so you can make holes in different footprints. Um, <laughs> you could use this to make odd shapes in your footprints and things like that. So um, I've actually then used this technique to make this art and to make uh, different obscure uh, footprints for um, actual components. <laughs> um, like I have like a reverse, a reverse mount uh, seven segment display that needed a cutout. Mm. Uh, I can make that cutout and I could move with the part um, as I moved around my PCB. So uh, there That's is- That's really cool. There's other uses uh, for that. And uh, that's one of the talks I gave at Teardown, which is on the Crowd Supply uh, YouTube um, that's up, is kind of how to use this for more uh, engineering type applications. Um, so we figured out how to change uh, the layer, but now we need to combine everything into uh, one file. So what I usually do is I copy the silk screen layer. Um, so I do the silk screen layer because it's already right, um, and I I already need to add it anyway. So it's kind of I get it there for free. Um, so now I have combined, and I have um, this front side silk layer. So now I just need to add the mask and the copper. Um, so if I go up here, um, I start at the FP poly, and then go all the way down right before the closing parenthesis, and I copy that. Go to the bottom here. Make sure you get it before the closing parenthesis. Um, so I added all the mask. Uh, do the same with the copper. Uh, start uh, where the first FP poly is. Uh, disregard the, the header information. Go down before the closing parenthesis. Copy that. Um, and then add it to the bottom. Uh, save this. So now if I import the combined, I have all three layers. Cool. Uh, so if I hit the 3D viewer, it's all three. I have a preview of uh, what it's gonna look like. Wow. Um, so now I have the footprint, I wanna save that. Um, See, I have my own, that's my own uh, library for uh, my own footprints. Uh, libraries could be a little confusing 
in in this program. Um, uh, Chris Gamble has uh, his contextual electro product, contextual electronics uh, YouTube site has uh, you know some uh, videos about KiCad, how to, you know how to manage libraries. I know SparkFun is also doing um, some series. Yeah, Sean Hemel's been doing one, right? Yeah, so I haven't uh, I haven't uh, got through those yet, but um, I I know he has a couple part series, so that should be good information as well if you have trouble with um, figuring out how to make custom footprints and things like that. So nice. um, there's some other resources for that. Um, so now I want to save this footprint. I usually do um, uh, do it. Uh, preface it with art so it's easier to find. Uh, you can't have spaces, so you just need to. Mm. Do a little um, underscore there, and so that, now that's saved. Um, so I could go into my. Um, this is my layout um, layout tool here. I want to import a new footprint on uh, this little um, symbol over here. The stall yeah. takes a second to uh, parse through everything. So now if I hit art. Um, let's see, Art Simone. Um, so now I have um, have this here. Mm. Um, so now I could move that around. Um, so that, you know, first, um, this doesn't. This is not a PCB right now. I need to put a uh, outline on it. So mm. I could go to um, want to draw my edge cut lines. Uh, set my grid to pretty, pretty chunky because this is, um, you know, not very accurate. Doesn't need to be very accurate, but I think I was uh, three and a half by two. Um, so down here, um, I have my distances. Um, so I want to go three point five. Go down two inches. All right. So now. Um, now that's my outline, and I could manually line this up, uh, but sometimes it's easier just to uh, figure out what the center is. So hmm. at 1.75 and one inch, um, so you can see everything lined up properly. Um, and if I go here, um, I have proper edge cuts on everything. Um, so now this is a circuit board, so I could, um, I could do, um, you know, I could do whatever I want with it as well. So I could do, uh, put my name on it. Um, so this is the text tool. Um, so right now I want to change, let's see. Oh. Mess up on me. Sometimes the text. Oh, no. There's some bugs. I think that screwed up on me. Um, you gotta have something break in a live demo, or it's not a live demo. Yeah, totally. Um, Realism. I think I didn't select a layer. That's probably why it screwed up. Uh -huh. um, so then I could put that. Um, Click the text. I could flip it, um, and then uh, move that where I want. So I added my little signature down here. Uh, it's hard to see. I usually hide them um, under. Oh, um, cool. Um, sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> I don't. Uh, just so they're not super uh, obnoxious. Um, yeah, but I hide them under a silk screen uh -huh. layer, so you can see them if up close. But um, and then, if, so if I could put whatever I want in there, if I wanted to um, do like a circuit, add some lighting. Um, what I usually do for the coins is I basically just uh, copy paste um, the footprint and then mm -hmm. put one on the back. Mm. Uh, did that copy paste right here? I'll duplicate. I was using, using the wrong commands. Uh, if I select it, hit F, uh, put it on the other side. So 
So now I have uh, the image on both sides. Ooh. And then if I save that, um, could just uh, Let's see. We go find this file. You can peek at all the stuff I've done. Uh -huh. um, oh no! What happened? Oh, are you using a development build of KiCad? That's strange. Uh, I forgot what I had. When I had. Oh, well, um, if you're using 4 oh, that should work. But um, so I guess we could go into the, f if you have problems, you could um, plot the Gerbers. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just do that to this top. Um, so this is the different layers you could plot out. Um, oh. So you, for some reason it doesn't default to mask. I don't know why, but, uh, and you wanna do edge cut. Uh, so front side copper, back side copper, uh, front side, back side silk screen, front side, back side mask, and then the edge cut, which is the outline. Um, I don't need any drill files, but this is to generate drill files for um, if you have vias or mounting cool. holes. Um, and then, let's see, need to zip that. All right, so I just added to a zip file so I can take that um, desktop, Simone. Cute little gear rotating. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little while because they are um, weird shapes. Yeah. Oh, um, so cool. So you have your preview. Um, you know, it'll, it'll give you a warning because it's. Um, you know, it's not, uh, they're expecting other stuff, but you could just hit this and accept it. But, um, huh. but yeah, that's, that is the process. Um, I think I went over everything or so most cool. everything, but yeah. Awesome. What are your future plans for this? Um, so if you I can have, share, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have a, a lady 81 I'm trying to finish, but I'm struggling. I want to do backlighting. Mm. Um, so let me stop sharing here. Um, so I'm struggling doing dithering. So dithering is, or I guess half toning is another term for it. Mm. Um, so basically, um, there's a bunch of, uh, oh, cool. using small dots to create, uh, gradients from one color. Um, so the idea is to have it light shine back here, um, and then have, uh, different, um, brightnesses from, um, the half toning on the copper in the back. So you can kind of see it wow, yeah. uh, there that you can see it seems it's fairly smooth um, just from the light coming from the room. Uh, wow, but cool. I've been having trouble getting those uh, circles crisp. Um, programs are kind of uh, failing when I try to uh, do a bunch of them. So um, I think it's actually like a Photoshop add-in into Illustrator to do it. Um, so I have to figure, I haven't spent time to figure that out yet, but, uh, that's one project. Uh, there's a couple of badges I want to do. Um, so I'll probably do some add on badges, uh, for DEF CON, <laughs> uh, not going, but, uh, I want to make some, uh, for people to, uh, to make. Um, so that's, that's the next one. Um, I know backlighting is the big thing that I want to go into next, but I don't have any, any huge plans. Um, I already did. Uh, I have some here. It's so cool did. how there is so much potential depth here that you can just go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> so I already did um, some huge designs. So uh, this was for um, 
this one didn't make it, but I did one for the Open Source Hardware Summit um, uh, last that year. That's one PCB, right? That's just yeah. one panel. So this is this is the one that was at the Open Source Hardware Summit. Um, yeah. So it is one panel. I think it's 16 by 22. Dang. That looks so cool. So yeah, that I ha Oshpark has two. I have one of each, so um, I now have two. Right, because they make three of each. <laughs> That's so uh, cool. Is that how big the, the panels are? Yeah, so yeah. So a standard panel is about, or 16 by 22, I think is standard panel. Hmm. And there's machines that'll do like up to like, I've seen like four foot uh, or a little under four foot along hmm. PCBs in, uh, for lighting stuff, for troffer lighting. Oh, um, yeah. But most of them are, are 16 by 22. And then they yeah. add a bunch of designs and uh, kind of combine them all together and have the mouse bites hold them together. Um, but yeah. nice. Oh, the, the little guys, yeah. the, like breakaway tab yeah. thing. The stuff you'll see that you, know, you kind of oh. chop off with some edge, edge cutters. Yeah, and I think that they said that if you do like a medium run, you can get it fully routed so that you don't have the little mouse bites. Yeah, they'll uh, basically like double, they'll do the whole board and then double stick tape it and then route it out. Huh, cool. Um, so you, you could fully route it out without the mouse binds. So you have like a sensitive, I think the octopus uh, board. Oh that, yeah. Um, oh, sweet. I think you built one. Pretty sure you built one. Yeah, yeah, I uh, sure did. <laughs> that that was... one I'm pretty sure was uh, routed out. Uh -huh. Drew was saying that I should do that with the little PC beads or charmware guys because yeah. they're, yeah, they want to be circles. But yeah, super cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to watch oh, this like five more times. <laughs> yeah, I've been, this is helpful because I've been meaning to make one myself, but uh, it's kind of easier just to do it live and, and just throw it out there and then people can. Um, okay. But yeah, I would, I may make a little more polished one, but um, having time to do that has been a little troubling lately, but. I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Have an awesome rest of your Thursday. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh yeah. Ciao. Right. Bye.